in any situation, we're gonna have one of these four possibilities. One possibility is Allah has given you mulk, and He has given you izzah. Well, that's one possibility. He gave you authority, He gave you kingdom, He gave you control, and at the same time you command the strength to exercise that control properly, and you're respected. That's the best of both worlds. It does happen. This is something Sulaiman alayhi salam enjoyed. This is something Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam enjoyed. You know, because one is to have physical power on the outside and the other is to have the respect and love and adoration of your followers on the inside. To have that, you really have to have true leadership. You can't just get that. That has to be earned. But that's the best of both worlds. Now the second scenario is you could have, as I've been saying, you could have mulk but no izzah. It's possible. Fir'aun had a lot of mulk. Fir'aun had a lot of power, a lot of control. And in some sense he had strength too. But over time his izzah started deteriorating. People didn't respect him. They were laughing at him. He couldn't even control Musa alayhi salam or the believers. He couldn't even control his own cabinet. Over time he started losing more and more and more izzah. So mulk is there, but izzah is going away. So he could proudly say, alayhi li mulku misra. Right? He says, I own the kingdom of Egypt alone. I'm the king, the only king. But you know, he saw that Izza is going away. So when he, when he told the magicians to make him look good, when they challenged Musa, you know what they said? They, they didn't say, bimulki fir'aun. They said, bi'izzati fir'aun. Illa na nahnu ghalibun. We, we declare the Izza, the, the glory, the respect, the honor of the Pharaoh. Because he knew that's where he's taken a hit. The army is still there. Mulk is still there. The dignity is gone. And he needs that to hold on to his power. So you could have that second scenario where you have some control, some authority, some label, but you have no respect left. No real authority in the hearts of those that, that follow you left. A third scenario is you have no power. La mulk. You have, you have no mulk, you have no control, no power, no authority, but you still have respect. You still have respect. I'm reminded of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. This boy has no power. He's a servant. But he's respected by his owner. To the point where when he's being put in a hostel, in the servants' quarters, the owner says, Akrimi mathwahu, honor his residence. Respect his residence. So it's possible, don't think just because you don't have power, you can't have respect. You can actually have dignity and respect and honor, even though you have no material power, no money. No control, no social status. Those things are mutually exclusive. Think of millions of people around the world that don't have common luxuries that you and I take for granted. There are so many millions of people in the world that don't have any transportation. They don't even have a bicycle. They don't have, does that mean they have no respect? The people that live in villages and don't receive a modern education. These are noble people. These are respectable people. But you know what we've done? Somewhere in the back of our minds, when you get a certain level of education, when you get a certain level of authority, then you're respectable. But if you don't have those things, you're less respectable. So a taxi driver is less respectable. The, the waiter at the restaurant is less respectable. The farmer is less respectable. The guy hanging off the back of the garbage truck is less respectable. But the PhD at the university is more respectable. He has some level of authority. The, the, the one in political office is more respectable. These are artificial definitions in our mind. Allah Azza wa has created a world in which there are sometimes people that have no power, no respect, no authority. Look at how honored the people of the cave are. We honor them to this day, they had no power. Look at the position Rasulullah was in sallallahu alayhi wa being expelled from his home, having to live in a cave. Having to live in, a, in exile. Eating off of dried up twigs to survive. And that is still the most noble man that ever lived sallallahu alayhi wa you don't think of someone who's become homeless as someone who has honor. And Ibrahim alayhi salam was made homeless. And he's honored. لا ملك بل عزة فلله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين Allah says, عزة belongs to Allah alone and to His Messenger and to all those who believe. If so long as you have iman in Allah, عزة will never go away. عزة is directly connected to your iman in Allah. It's a powerful thing. And then of course there's the worst case scenario. You have no power, no dominion, لا ملك ولا عزة. No respect either, no authority either. There are people unfortunately that, you know, just because they don't have in the material sense, you don't have money, or you don't have social influence, you don't have control, that's enough for you to act in a way that you don't even respect your own self. In want of getting those things, we sometimes degrade ourselves, humiliate ourselves. And so that's the worst of the worst, at the very bottom. 
you know, to not have mulk and to also not have izza at the same time. And as you learn this, you're learning something even more powerful. Mulk is less important. Izza is more important. That's actually what you're learning.